Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Frank from Tested. Frank, we have here your Lich King armor that yes. you made for Blizzard. Yep. For Comic-Con this year. Comic-Con for China Joy, for Gamescom. It's been all over the place. It's a beautiful armor. And we've shown you a little bit of the process, specifically how you did spray chrome. Spray chrome, yeah. Now before these pieces look like this, before you even took them out and cast them, they started off as foam. Yes, we foam fabricated everything. And then we made brush up molds and then did clay presses and then did more brush up molds. So brush up molds is the topic today and we're yes. gonna turn on that time machine, go back to when this was just but foam and show you that brush up mold process. Hey, look at that, that's a piece of armor. Look at that. So this is like a pretty well-crafted piece of foam armor, like what a cosplayer would make mm -hmm. for an event like BlizzCon. Yes. Uh, but what you wanna do is you're taking it to the next level. Yes. You're gonna be making a brush up mold on this. Yes. Uh, so what's your first step? Um, the first thing you have to do is prep the piece for a mold. Like you could just set this on the table, start slathering silicone on there and that'd be fine. But the problem is where it touches the table, you're not gonna get that return. So what we wanna do is we wanna make a flange on here so that the silicone has somewhere to go off the edge of this. Um, it's just a way to set up the mold so that we could take it to the next step of the process, which is casting the clay part. Mm. Um, so you always have to think about what the next step is in the process and what ultimately all the steps are so that when you're designing a step or a mold or how is it going to get poured or how is it going to get injected or how are you going to brush up the next thing. So um, setting this up before we do the brush up is what we have to do. And the way you would set this up, like you're talking about adding foam flanges around, yes. would be different than if you were going to do a brush up mold of this piece or that well, piece over well, there. Well, you know, this is pretty similar. We've taken all the edges of the foam when we've made that flange. Mm -hmm. If we were going to do like a brush up on a head, like a sculpture of a, right. you know, a face or something like that, you don't really need to add that flange. You already have that down here. Um, Every mold is going to be different. Every piece is going to be a little bit different. You're but, considering the geometry yeah. of the piece, how much of the detail, what part of the edge you care about yeah. in the final silicone mm -hmm. brush-up mold. Yeah. For the flanges, it, what, what material are you using? We're just going to take some foam core scraps and we're going to just hot glue them onto the edge. Like, okay. Super simple. Super simple. All right, get to it. of a mental gymnastics. Obviously you have the experience, but thinking of the negative space of what that mold has to look like once you paint the silicone on top. Well, mold making is always a, a giant game of Tetris. Like yeah. if you want to be a better mold maker and visualize these things inside out and upside down, play more Tetris. Um, it's, I mean, it's the, same, it's the same sort of mental gymnastics as that. You have to figure out where these pieces go and what, like have the foresight to see how, the, how these things are going to fit together later on. Notice your flanges don't need to be airtight along the edge of the... Um, I'm not really... Because this is kind of a waste mold, um, any little imperfections I can cut off with a knife, and any imperfections in the part, we can kind of re-sculpt in clay. So I'm not super concerned with this mold being, you know, a flawless mold. Like, even these flanges, like, they have all these slices in them from cur curving the uh, foam core. I'm not worried about that, because we're only going to be doing a clay press of this part and it's, it's kind of relevant and, after that. And you can hide your crimes there. Yeah. And all this does is get you this lip. Yes. Um, you, you have to think of this as a waste mold. Like, you can't... I know that, like, materials are expensive. Silicone, foam, and, like, everything costs money. But when you're thinking about trying to do these, like, larger processes, like, this is no different than, like, a piece of Kleenex or a chip brush or something. Like, this whole mold process, even though it's expensive, is a disposable step. I'm trying to be frugal with all of the materials and all of the steps, but you don't need, it doesn't need to be a perfect finished piece. Because you know, this mold's only going to get run once or maybe twice, so I don't need it to be really clean and really flawless. Um, it just needs to be functional.
So one last thing I did before we do the brush up is I sprayed the whole thing with Crystal Clear to kind of, it helps seal the foam a little bit, seals the foam core. And then I also glued it to this turntable mm. so that way when we're doing the brush up, it's not scooting all over the place. Right. Um, and then, you know, I could turn it around while I'm, and work on all sides. If I had a smaller table, I could work around the table. But it's always kind of nice to have like a mold or a sculpture on a turntable and kind of be able to get around it. Lazy Susan. Yep. Okay, so now to the silicone. Yes. Uh, I see blue and gold, yellow. It's yep. smooth on. Yeah. Uh, what type of silicone are you using? Um, this is a platinum silicone. It's called Rebound 25. They also have a Rebound 40, which is a little stiffer. 25, um, sure 25 hardness. 25, sure A hardness. Yes. Yeah. That's the measure of how soft or firm something is. Okay. Um, so this is, uh, it's a pretty standard durometer for mold making silicone. Uh, the nice thing about this is that it's got about a 20 minute work time, so you could Put it on, and it, it's got a viscosity that's nice for brush ups. And so, it twenty more time—that's relatively short. Short for yeah. a mold making silicone. Yeah, right. I usually want more time so bubbles rise out, but I want it quicker so that I can do the next layer. Multiple layers. You're not yes. doing it all at once. Not no. about pouring silicone. Nope. It's getting those details in one layer at yeah. a time. So the first layer I'll put on. It's not going to be a super heavy layer because I want it to grab all the details. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll let that sit, and then the subsequent layers, I'll add a thickener called 5X. It's just a liquid additive that mm. makes it more viscous, so that way it's more like peanut butter. And then you can kind of trial it on and build up some thickness. Yeah, I notice on the labeling, especially also on the 5X, uh, it says it's rated so you can do verticals. Like, mm -hmm. if you, this is laying flat, yeah. gravity helps, but if you're going to be brushed doing the something like here, this, yeah, you don't want it to just all just run right off. Right. So. The more viscous it is, the better it holds to a vertical surface. Yeah. So, and the other cool thing about this, you don't need a scale for this. It's all one-to-one. -one. So you get the cups with the little measurings on the side, mm -hmm. and then you just pick whatever number you want. And you have to kind of guess on how big of a batch. Like, that's always kind of a game you have to play is, well, how much do I need to make for this? Um, there is no equation for surface area plus your flanges. Eh, you could probably get into some <laughs> math and do that, but... Um, is it better to be more conservative about how much and make another well, batch? Yeah, you could always make another batch. That's yeah. easy. Um, and you have 20 minutes to kind of get that if you, you know, like let's say I made 12 ounces and then only got to here, mix up another 12 real quick and finish it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably going to do like 18, 20 ounces to start off with and that'll probably get my first layer on here. Um, again, and then I just kind of let that set for about 20 minutes and then do, and then the next layers go really quick. It's just the first one I want it to set up real nice so that it grabs that detail. All right, let's get started. Okay, brushing on your first layer. Uh, how thick of a layer is the first layer? It's not about how thick, it's about making sure that you grab all the detail. So you can, you can build it up a bunch, you just have to make sure that you're not missing any detail or you're not catching any bubbles. So it's kind of nice to keep the first layer on the thin side, um, just so you can see if there's any spots that you're, you, know, you don't have coated. And on but, the thin side means you can still see the color of your, yeah. your foam prop. Yeah, see, we can see the, the black through this. Yep. So if you take an air hose, you can kind of... It's probably more important on something that has, like, detail like pore texture or something. This is all pretty much a smooth surface, and it's going to get resculpted anyway, so it's not a giant deal. But if you take air, you can kind of blow it around, and that will help pop any bubbles that are on the surface. So that's kind of relieving that surface tension. It's about 20 minutes later, mm -hmm. eh, maybe just short of 20 minutes. Give or take. Uh, so the work time is done on your first layer. Yeah, uh, uh, you can't really, like there's a point where you can't push it around anymore and you have to like just kind of let it go. Mm. Um, you could, there's a couple of spots where it was starting to like kind of sag and stuff and I just kind of pushed it around a little bit but you see how it's, it's kind of like, it's a paste now and you, you really want to avoid messing with it. Mm. And this is not fully set. If it was fully no. set, it'd be firm. Yeah. Uh, that's still gonna be, for this, yeah. a couple hours. Yeah, it'll be six hours. Uh, it's a six hour demold time. Got it. So, but you're ready for your second layer. Yeah, so the second layer, what I wanna do is, I'm gonna mix up another batch, pretty much the same. I'm gonna put a little bit of pigment in it, so that way I can see where I got the coverage. So mm. if it's a different color, you know if you're 
you know, getting full coverage. Um, and then I'm gonna put some of that 5X in there to make it thick and paste-like. Right. Um, and that's gonna help it uh, form on top of this first layer. Yeah. Uh, how many total layers do you think you're gonna be going for? I'm gonna try and get this done in two. Because this is just a waste mold and we're gonna do a clay press and then remold it again later, mm -hmm. um, I don't wanna go too crazy and, and you know, make a real nice robust mold. This is a waste mold again. If someone was gonna make this one time yeah. for their foam armor piece or prop mm -hmm. and use that and want it to be durable to do multiple castings, mm -hmm. is there a certain thickness you're gonna be aiming yeah, for? Yeah, you know, it's, it's probably a good, uh, probably a good range to have is about a half inch thick uh, in silicone. Mm -hmm. uh, so that way it's, it's durable and it's still flexible. Um, I mean, you don't need a real thick silicone thing, but you don't want it too thin because then it'll deform too easily. So half inch is probably uh, a good range. And with this uh, type of silicone, with the 25A short hardness, mm -hmm. you have a certain type of uh, hardness, uh, but if could you add a different type of silicone or have it yeah. be a firmer, uh, where would you want that different? Well, when we do the final molds, after these things are all resculpted, I'm gonna do my first two, I'm gonna do two surface coat layers like this in a 40 durometer. So that way the detail is real nice and crisp and then we'll, we'll back it, we'll do our thickened layers with 25 so that it still has a good flex to get off of it. Ah, that's actually backwards when I would thought. I, I would think you want it more rigid in the back, we actually want more rigidity. I want, yeah, I want a sharp that. detail so that when we, when we lay up our, our pieces, um, that, that detail's really crisp, and then we just want it to be able to flex off easily. Would you back the silicone with anything to give it a firm rigidity behind well, it? Af after we do this brush up, we're gonna do a plaster bandage jacket on top of this, which will give it that rigidity. All right, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Layer two next. Yep. Wow, two layers of silicone. Yeah, it's like nacho cheese and then bean dip. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, how tightly are these bonded? Um, well, once they're all fully set, they're they're going to be like one layer. Mm. Because you're doing them right after another, um, they chemically bond. Got yeah. it. If you waited, if I waited like past that six hours or past like another day, and I tried to put another layer on there, it might delaminate. It might not be a strong bond. But since I'm doing it right after another, it's totally fine. All right, so at this point you're happy with the thickness, you got really good coverage. It's good enough for what this waste mold needs to be. Now if I was gonna make this like a final mold that I was gonna run a lot of parts in or something like that, I might put some registration keys, I might make the flange a little bit different. There's a whole bunch of things you could do different to make this not a quick throwaway mold. Um, but for what we're doing, it doesn't need to be anything more than that. Now that we have this rubber part, we need to put a jacket on top of it, otherwise it's just a floppy piece of silicone. Um, so we're going to use plaster bandages, and this is real easy. It's just plaster bandages that we already pre-cut, and this, and this is uh, four layers thick. And then we're just, we put it in the water and then put it on there. All right. And that's about it. Once I put that last layer of silicone on there, I took some alcohol and I smoothed it all out. And what that does is it gives it a nice smooth surface so that when this jacket is on there, like if it's bumpy, the silicone might not slide into the jacket as easy. Um, so you have all these like surface defects and it'll make it so that, you know, there might, it might not register properly. So I wanna make it smooth. When you, um, when you mix plaster bandages, you have these things dry. You think about it, it's, a, it's like a, cheesecloth with little bits of plaster in there. So when you wet it, that's not necessarily mixed plaster. So you have to take it, and you kind of scrub it in your hands, which is mixing the plaster that's inside those little fibers. And then you want to wring out any like excess little bit of water. You don't want it to be dripping wet, but you want it to be wet enough, like soaked and mixed. And then you can kind of smooth it out over there. You could push out any little bubbles that might be under the surface and 
that's kind of the best way to mix your plaster bandages. How much coverage do you want around the silicone? I prepped all these bandages so that they're four thick. So that means every time I put a bandage on here, that's four layers of this plaster bandage. Um, so I'm pretty much doing one layer. I'm overlapping a bit, but I'm pretty much doing one layer over the whole thing and then kind of rolling it a little bit extra along the edge just to give some rigidity. But it, again, it's a waste mold. It just needs to get like one or two castings out. Everything is all set up now. Set up, hard as a rock. You got two layers of silicone. Yep. You got your plaster to reinforce it. Yep. And you have basically all these other we have, brush up molds. Yeah, we have a bunch of the parts done and we've already um, put clay into a bunch of them. So let me open this first and then I'll show you what we did on those. Okay. So it's kind of easy. Remember oh. I said I wanted it to be so that the, everything comes apart really nice. Yeah. I don't want anything to hang up on that clay sculpture underneath. So um, like when I do this, I don't want it to like grab. Mm -hmm. So the plaster bandage comes off nice and easy. And that's where you're talking about you could have made registration mm -hmm. for the plaster for the silicone, um, but this is bumpy enough that that's going to kind of... It's, it's enough that right it'll in. sit in there the right way. There's only kind of one way it's going to go in there right. Mm. And to take the silicone, brush it mold off, just tear it off. Pretty much. I mean, you want to be careful not to, you know, rip the silicone, but it should just come right off. And you have the most durable silicone on the contact points. Yes. Hey, look at that. Your foam piece is still intact. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you wanted to make a second mold for some reason, or if you wanted to, you know, use it for something else, you could still, you just, you know, take all this hot glue off and then a that piece is still and, fine. Yeah. Very cool. Um, so this all sits in there real nice, but this is a big giant mess. So easy way to do that is just take some scissors, trim it up. Mm. And all that, the uh, the foam core, those flanges, mm -hmm. that is all around the sides here. Mm -hmm. um, so you have the extra lip. And remember, we're going to be putting clay into this thing. So mm -hmm. some of the, you know, subtle nuances of this mold are insignificant. You know? Right. Um, it's your first generation. Yep. It's not what your final parts being cast out Correct. of. Correct. All you need this to serve is to give you a clay sculpture that you can then work in your sculptural details. Exactly. What these guys are mm -hmm. out here. That's it. Then that sits in there and then we'll heat up some monster clay, brush it in, build up a little bit of thickness, and then we'll have one of these. And so for these, this one we just poured flat because this is, uh, this is part of the belt. So it's just a big flat mold. Um, for these, we, you know, kind of built up little areas. But to take it out, again, want that plaster to just, we don't want anything to hang up anywhere. So that just flops right out. And this Whoa. just comes right off. That's super cool. So now we'll take that and we'll add in all the skulls and sculptural detail and all the little details that are gonna make this a little bit nicer than just some carved foam. Mm. You know, there's a lot of things you can do with foam to make it, you know, Look, look nice. aged and everything, exactly. but there's some stuff like just having that sculptural touch really takes it over the edge. So that's right. what we're going to be doing on this. And repeatability too, because yeah. if you need to make multiple belts, different weather, different styles, a battle damaged one versus a clean one, yeah. you have this mold that you can cast a couple of these clay sculptures off mm -hmm. of to make variants. Uh, next up is to take this and you're going to then remold that. Yep, we do the sculptures, we do it, and we do another mold, which will be a little, it'll be a little bit more resilient because it, we want it to um, hold the forms a little bit better. Remember we talked about putting in the harder durometer silicone to hold this up. We'll, we'll get into all of that. But this is just how to make this step of the molds. So that was just a walkthrough of how to make this waste mold mm -hmm. that you then clay pressed yep. and did extra sculpting on. Yeah. And it's a process you use pretty much all the time? All the time. And we did that again after that. Pretty much the same process. Made the mold a little bit thicker, a little bit more durable, but that's it. And if you have questions about that molding process, you can place them in the comments below. We'll be back in Frank's shop in the future for more behind the scenes looks in Frank's processes. But thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.